There are many places in the world that are mysterious in one form or another. But when it comes to Antarctica, it's a place that many don't think about, yet they honestly really should. It's the anomaly of our seven continents on Earth, because no one really lives there. It's a frozen tundra of death, and yet animals and other organisms live there just fine, and those who do brave the frost and cold often find that this continent is hiding a lot more than they may think. And I'm not even talking about small things, but rather large things that could potentially change our view of the place. With that in mind, here now are 20 strange things found in Antarctica. Number 20. Antarctic Lakes there are all sorts of misconceptions about this place that have been spread around the world for quite some time now. For example, one of the more popular ones is that the entire continent is completely frozen from top to bottom, and that's why no life can truly exist there. Except, as noted, there is life in Antarctica, and it's a place with a bit more diversity than you may believe. Many researchers have gone there over the years to try and learn not only what makes the continent tick, but how far things go beneath its surface. And it's been during that research that we've learned incredible things about the place. For example, when you dive deep beneath the surface, you'll find that there are lakes there. But how can there be lakes if everything is frozen, you may ask? Well, the answer is that the farther you go from the surface, the warmer it actually gets, because it's closer to the Earth's core and farther from the blistering winds and other frigid things that keep the surface frozen. Yes, I'm talking about the ground, not the waters of the ocean. NASA has revealed that there are meltwater lakes that exist happily in the depths beneath the surface, and they are quite robust. In fact, they help fill up waterways that go throughout Antarctica and even drain into the ocean, which is not what you may expect. As you could likely guess, scientists of all types are interested by these findings, not the least of which is because it doesn't appear to make any sense about how this can happen. Yet it does. Even NASA is chipping in by using their satellites to see how many of these subglacial lakes exist in Antarctica. The more that we learn about these lakes, the more we may learn about other mysteries on the continent as well. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. And now it's time for the fancy topic. And oh boy, do I have a classic conspiracy theory for you today. You see, there have been all sorts of tales about things being found in Antarctica that could be man-made, and if you were to hear the sentence, there is a mysterious structure in Antarctica, and some think it's a massive building, you may well feel that it's something going on there that we should honestly know about. That brings us to this picture, which some say is a representation of a building made by the Germans during World War II. That's right, there are some who believe that the Axis powers had the ability to make a base in Antarctica back in the 1940s, and it's been active for at least a little while ever since. The irony of the statement is that there are confirmed tales of members of the Third Reich fleeing Germany with various items of value, and then traveling to places like South America where they were not likely to be found and persecuted. There were even bases that they built in order to house some of these people and the things they brought with them. So in theory, if they were able to go around South America to get some of the places they needed to hide in, they theoretically could have made it to Antarctica. But the idea of them creating a base there, it's a little bit ludicrous. Don't forget that it's a place where things like plants don't naturally grow, and people who live there now live in small bases with vast resources at their disposal. Even then, they still need regular shipments of supplies to keep them afloat. Given the resources it would have taken to make and then maintain a base back in those days, it would have likely been foolish, but reckless, to attempt such a thing. Plus, there were allies in the Pacific that likely would have stopped any attempt to make it happen because they would have needed large vessels to ferry all of those materials. While it is a lovely conspiracy, especially when you look at certain images from Google Maps, there's no concrete evidence to go off of. And if you really need a nail in the coffin, if such a base did exist and was massive, why hasn't it been rediscovered yet? As always, you can comment down below using the hashtag FancyTopic 
and let me know what you think about what I just showed you on the screen. Number 19. The Blood Falls Here's a classic from the region. When you visit the area around Antarctica, the only colors you're likely to expect to see are white, blue, and maybe various shades of the two. However, in 1911, a blood-red twist on this expectation would be discovered. During that year, a geologist explored the region that was partly named after him later and found himself looking at a waterfall coming out of a glacier. There's nothing truly odd about that until you realize that the water that was gushing out into the ocean was blood red, and it was staining the ocean water with its red tint. Known as the Blood Falls, it's become one of the most popular tourist attractions for the region, and yes, some people do find Antarctica a tourist destination. They even go on cruises there quite often. Anyways, the water that was gushing out was clearly not naturally red, so what had caused it to happen? The answer for that was changed over the years. For example, it was first thought to be red algae, which had been known to change water colors, but further studies upon the glacier found that something a bit more clever was taking place. As it spends time at the surface, that's when it becomes oxidized and leaves this beautiful... You see, at one point in time, there was a very salty lake where the glacier now stands. When that glacier formed, the water was no longer exposed to the atmosphere, which allowed it to become even more salty over the course of many years. And not only that, it became so salty that it was infused with iron. Why does that matter? Well, it's so salty that the water cannot be frozen, and so when that water is pushed through a crack in the glacier and shot out into the natural air, the salt and the iron in the water oxidizes, which causes it to rust. And what color does rust have? Well, that's right, a brownish red, and that's what you see when you go near the falls. Due to the recycling of the water, that effect will likely be going on, possibly forever. Number 18. Antarctic Strawberry Feather Star now, there's a set of words that don't really seem to go together, now do they? And yet, here I am, trying to find a way to make it happen. Thankfully, it won't be all that hard, as the Antarctic Strawberry Feather Star is not a star in the sky that just happens to shine over the place. It's actually one of the many creatures that can be found within the depths of the ocean around the continent. Its more scientific name is Crinoid, but when you take a look at the creature, you're probably going to call it a monster and run for your life. I wouldn't blame you if you did that. The thing is pretty horrifying to look at. It features 20 appendages, which it can use to move around the waters of the area and catch its prey, and it looks pretty freaky while it's doing it. What may surprise you the most is that it's technically related to things like starfish, though obviously those things have many fewer legs. The importance of the strawberry feather star cannot be shaken off though. While it is something from a person's nightmares, and I'm probably not going to sleep tonight myself, it is yet another example of life finding a way to live in some of the most harsh conditions that the planet has to offer. The Antarctic strawberry feather star had to find a way to endure the cold waters, and it did just that. Plus, since it was very much unknown until 2023, it means there could be even more creatures out there just waiting to be discovered. While that may not mean very much to you, it does give meaning to scientists who want to learn more about the region. Number 17. Shrimp It may seem a bit small-scale to talk about a shrimp, but it's another important discovery in Antarctica, and I mean that literally in this case. You see, NASA dug a big hole in an ice sheet back in 2010, and they decided to send a camera down there to get a visual of what things were like below the icy surface. You can probably guess what happened next. As they went further down into the sheet, they found themselves looking at a shrimp. But here's why that discovery matters. When NASA sent the camera down, the only thing they expected to find were ice and microbes. They truly felt that there would be nothing of importance beneath the ice, because naturally, nothing could survive down there. And yet, not only was the shrimp down there, it seemed to be doing just fine. It even went and sat on the camera for a bit. Then, when they pulled up the camera, they found that there was an appendage attached to it, but the limb was not from the shrimp, it was actually from a jellyfish. So that means that there were at least two non-microscopic species living within the space below the ice sheets, and it makes you wonder what else they might end up finding down there. Number 16. Antarctica Rainforest Now I'm sure this one may throw you for a loop to start, because there's no way that there should be a rainforest on the surface of Antarctica. 
It's too cold for that to survive, right? Well, the good news for you is that you're correct. Even the best of trees could not survive there. The ground is much too frozen for the roots to move, and it wouldn't be able to get the proper nutrients to last a long time. But I never said that rainforest was on the surface. In fact, like many other things I've shown you so far, this rainforest is actually beneath the ice. The forest in question is believed to have been from about 90 million years ago, and that's important because at one point in time, it might have been a place that was, well, a bit warmer by a much larger margin. And as such, it would have had things like rainforests in order to keep the life going. Multiple types of plants were found in this forest, and it paints an interesting picture of what life might have been like before it all froze over. With some more research, we may get a timeline of when the once hot land had gone icy cold. Number 15. Gambertsev Mountain Range You may think that I'd be finished talking about natural elements after revealing the forest, but you are wrong. After all, there is a whole lot of snow and ice on that continent, and we've apparently not seen one of the biggest natural formations as a result, a freaking mountain range. Hidden beneath a 2 to 4,000 kilometer thick sheet of ice are the Gambertsev Mountains. They stretch for over 1,200 kilometers and rise to 3,000 meters, a third of the height of Mount Everest. There is a massive mountain range that is fully formed and incredibly tall and long, and yet we don't see it because it's buried beneath an even bigger sheet of ice. That should give you some scaling as to how big things are there. But how do we know that it's there? Well, we've used radar and special magnetic equipment to scan everything, and boy oh boy did those scans showcase how little that we actually know about our world. And just start climbing through without the, without them. the mountains are said to be over a billion years old, and scientists honestly don't really understand how they've lasted that long given the freezing conditions and the slab of ice that they're buried under. Number 14. Admiral Bird. There's always going to be somebody who tries to be the first to do something and make history as a result. And for the United States, Admiral Bird was a man who was known for going out into cold weather conditions of the most extreme kind, and somehow he could survive. He had been in Alaska for decades braving the Bering Sea, when eventually, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt called upon him to help the United States get to Antarctica and build a base there. The trick here is that at that time, the Admiral was still using an old sail-style boat with a steam engine, and yet he was actually able to get there and get his job done, which is just about insane to think about. And then a few years later, when Roosevelt needed to get the people out of the place due to the events of the Second World War coming on, well, he got Bird to go back, and his ship was once again the hero of the day, getting everyone out and bringing them home. The top of the world, and perhaps about something about the bottom of the world. Should he have been able to do all of that? Well, no, but he did it anyways. Number 13. Singing Ice You've likely seen and heard all kinds of crazy things that you would not have predicted before watching this video, so why not add some more to that? In Antarctica, there is a slab of ice that was thought to be actually singing. This took place in 2018, when researchers were doing some tests on the Ross Ice Shelf. They found that when the winds of the area swept over the ice slab, it began to create noise. Specifically, it would vibrate, and a humming sound that resembled an Australian didgeridoo came about. Hey, you don't need to look up that instrument, it's kind of annoying. But the ice slab making these noises is nothing short of incredible, because it doesn't only make these sounds occasionally, it does it pretty much all the time and in cycles. What's more, the nature of the sound changes depending on how the surface of the ice slab and presumably the snow and such around it is. So it could make all sorts of noise depending on the time of the year, the conditions at hand, and if one slab is making music, well, wouldn't it be possible that there are many more of them doing this, and we just haven't found a way to bring the band together? These are the questions that keep me up at night. Number 12. Polyneas As noted earlier, there are much, much warmer waters within the depths of Antarctica that cause certain things like lakes and waterways to happen. But that's not the only thing it can do. You see, if the water is pushed up enough, 
and things go a certain way, they can create massive holes known as polyneas throughout Antarctica. We've discovered some of these holes in the past, and from 2017 was the biggest of the lot, spanning 78,000 square kilometers. That particular one was the first one to be observed in real time since the 1970s, not to mention the first of its kind to open up like this in decades. The warm water, as mentioned before, is pushed up by ocean currents, melting the ice on the surface. And as that water comes in contact with the cooler surface water, it sinks once again, only to be reheated and pushed back. Eventually, these holes are made, but scientists are still confused as to how they exist in the overall and how nearby animals are possibly using them. Only further research is going to provide those answers. Number 11. Mount Erebus Now, I'm not talking about another mountain. In fact, Mount Erebus is much more than that. It's actually an active volcano. There are actually volcanoes on the continent, and this is one that's active and still warm to this day. The volcano sits above a thin slice of crust, so molten rock more easily rises up from the Earth's interior. It emits plumes of gas and steam on the regular, and occasionally spits out rock and Strombolian eruptions. Plus, it was confirmed that there's a lava lake in this volcano, which raises all kinds of questions and possibilities for the future. Just to be clear, this is not like the mountain range from before where it's buried beneath the snow and ice. It is very much above the surface and stretches almost 4,000 feet above sea level. That all being said, it is covered in snow and ice, and it would be a really interesting thing to see it erupt and how that eruption would not only affect the continent, but the world as a whole, depending on how big that it is. Number 10. Southern Ocean We've dabbled lightly within the ocean previously, and now we'll get right into it. Officially, the name of the ocean that surrounds the continent is the Southern Ocean, and it's been a thing of beauty in its own right, having much more to offer scientists and researchers in terms of wonder and ability. First off, despite it being freezing cold and surrounding the coldest place in the world, the waters are actually teeming with all kinds of life. And as I showed you before, there are actually life forms inside of it that are just being learned about. That means there's definitely more in there that we haven't found yet. Curiously, it has a way of absorbing carbon emissions that we humans put out, and if we could learn how it does that, we may just be able to help curb global warming. Number 9. The McMurdo Dry Valleys the idea of anything being dry in Antarctica may sound ludicrous at first, but it just goes to show that you haven't seen everything that the continent has to offer. Yes, 99% of it is covered in ice, but the other 1% belongs to the McMurdo Dry Valleys. And did you know the continent is actually classified as a desert? If you were to go there, you would see that these places are snow-free and don't have a drop of ice upon them. Plus, due to how low the humidity is, you're not going to find a whole lot of water of any kind either. There are numerous reasons for that, which includes nearby snow-free mountains that block the snow and ice from filling up the valley. So that's the, the big charismatic megafauna of the dry valley. The winds can get up to 320 kilometers per hour, and that also helps by being so hot. In the end, you end up being dry, and you get sandy valleys on a continent that's full of ice and snow. Number 8. Antibiotic-Resistant Bacteria One of the reasons that people go to places like the Arctic and Antarctic is the ice is a perfect preserver of particles of the past. Seriously, go and dig out a massive chunk of ice and you'll get as low as possible within those shafts to pull out things that are tens of thousands of years old and beyond. Sometimes what we find is rather horrifying. And here's a great example of that. Bacteria in Antarctica has been discovered with genes that give them natural antibiotic and antimicrobial resistance and have the potential to spread out of the polar regions. This would be found in 2022 by some Chilean scientists, and they noted that these evolutions could make it rather problematic if global warming helps them spread across the world. After all, if they're immune to our medicines, we'll have quite the tough time fighting them should we get infected by them. So just imagine multiples of these kinds of things spreading across the world and creating new diseases. Nobody likes that thought. Number 7. Large Meteorite 
In truth, meteorites of all sizes can be found all over the world, as it's really a crapshoot as to where they'll land if they're able to survive the Earth's atmosphere. But when they do land in Antarctica, it's cause for celebration, because it's a chance for them to be collected in their natural state versus just finding the remnants that may have been worn down by nature or attacked by the local creatures. Solar system? I don't know how they'd know that. Such an occurrence took place in 2023, where a large meteorite was found that was the largest that had ever been discovered there. And it wasn't alone either. It had four other meteorite brethren that were found nearby, showing just how often the place gets pelted. Now, naturally, these space rocks are used to help us understand the stars above and to give us clues as to where they came from, along with the unique composition of space rocks themselves. Number 6. Fossils The same cold conditions that help to preserve meteorites are those that often help fossils to survive quite well in the region. That's why in 2016, it was a huge discovery when a plethora of fossils were found and dated to be between 67 to 71 million years old. And that's really, really old. Specifically, the fossils were found on James Ross Island, and they found both marine and land-based dinosaur life within the fossils. Ones they confirmed to have found included pleosaurs and mosasaurs, and they were eventually taken back to the mainland for study. As stated before, Antarctica was not always frozen. That means there were plenty of prehistoric creatures that lived there once upon a time. And by finding out more about these creatures, we get a better picture of what once was within this continent. Number 5. Endurance Now, I'm not saying that you're going to find your endurance if you go there, though technically it wouldn't be all that much of a lie. Instead, I'm talking about the infamous sailing vessel named the Endurance that went there in 1915. It was part of a big expedition headed up by Sir Ernest Shackleton to learn more about the continent, but as you may have guessed, it did not go well. After trying to break through the icy tundra, the ship was surrounded and eventually sank. The good news is that the crew were able to get smaller boats and have themselves rescued. As for the Endurance, it fell into the waters below and was not discovered again until 2022. But when it was found 3,000 meters below sea level, it was in great condition because of the cold waters. Number 4. Moving Iceberg Typically, you don't have to worry about icebergs unless you're a ship named the Titanic. But a recent finding from December of 2023 indicates that some creatures may be in trouble because of a moving iceberg named A-23. This iceberg was not only a big chunk of ice, it was basically an island that's three times the size of New York City. So yeah, even the Titanic would have seen that one coming. The irony is that this movement was long overdue. It was created in 1986 after having separated from an ice shelf, but then it got stuck on the seafloor and it didn't move for decades. That was until 2023, when it finally got a move on, and it might hit a certain graveyard that's currently populated with penguins. Number 3. Dragon Skin Ice Now, you know the Polynias that I talked about earlier? Well, a special kind of ice can be formed in them called Dragon Skin Ice. It's said to be a bizarre kind of ice that highlights just how weird the continent is when it decides to create giant holes within itself. While I'm not exactly sure just how weird the particular ice is, what I do know is that everything this hole creates is special, and that's why scientists are so gung-ho about learning more about it. I'll give them the time to cook, metaphorically speaking, and hope that dragon skin ice doesn't eventually turn into an ice dragon. Number 2. The Antarctic Pyramids Remember when I talked about conspiracy theories around Antarctica? and how Google Earth had helped to make them possible? Well, here's another one for you. Thanks to certain pictures from Google Earth, people noticed that there was potentially a pyramid-like object on the surface of the continent. That would be odd, given that there were no known civilizations there, and as such, no one would be there to build them. Naturally, that got a whole bunch of conspiracy theorists talking about who had made them and what they were like and more. The answer is much more mundane. It may look like a pyramid from above, 
but they're actually just mountains with pyramid-shaped peaks. Number 1. A UFO Now, you really thought that I would end this video without talking about the potential for aliens to show up in Antarctica? I mean, come on. This is another one of those classic conspiracy theories. And there is some evidence to show that if such a thing had landed in Antarctica, it would last for quite a long time. Thanks to, you guessed it, Google Earth, there have been images shared all over the years by idiots on the internet that have made people wonder if they're actually UFOs. For example, a couple of years ago, there was a supposed crash site that was found in the snow, and people just dove into what it really all meant. As it turned out, aside from them not having lives and or jobs, the thing was just a landslide that had some tracks that went all the way back down to the mountain that it started from. Aliens in Antarctica? Well, there's no chance of that. That's all from the great icy and snowy continent of Antarctica and the many things that have been found in its ice and snow. Were you shocked by some of the things discovered within the continent? And which of them do you think could spell more new findings in the future? Perhaps you know of one that I missed. Go ahead and let me know all about it in the comments section down below. Be sure to check out all the other cool things that are popping up on the screen, and I will see you next time.